Hi. Uh, despite what it says uh, on the screen, uh, like many of you here, I'm a math teacher. Uh, that's what I do most days. Um, computers can, can be used to make uh, teaching maths easier. They're make, make, used to make tr teaching traditional maths easier for the teacher. So what? Uh, what's interesting for me about this conference is can we use technology to teach skills that aren't already taught, complementary problem-solving skills. Um, what can we now teach? Um, problem with that is education is driven by the exams. What teachers teach in the classroom, despite what Mark Daw said before lunch, is driven by what's in the exam. So can we use computers in the exam to change the assessment to then drive changes in the curriculum, what's taught? I'm going to show you a little game first. Nothing to, nothing to do with GeoGebra. Um, let's have a little look at that. It's written by a friend of mine. Uh, so the trick is we've got to get our little robot friend here to navigate and pick up all the mazes. So we'll try something like we'll go forwards. Uh, mm, let's see. If it's yellow, then we'll turn, turn right. If it's not yellow, then we'll just carry on as we were before. So I've written a little computer program. I've not typed, I've not used the keyboard for that. Let's see what it does. Okay, it doesn't quite work. Okay, so challenge for you, can you make that one work? Uh, let's go back. Um, so that's teaching some complementary skills, I think. Um, I don't think any of those are examined on the curriculum at the moment, though, are they? The skills, I think everyone here would probably agree that would teach children desirable skills. I'm hoping you all agree that. Um, how can we examine those skills? I don't know. Um, what is GeoGebra? You can probably kind of guess from the name. Um, relates geometry and algebra. Uh, so here's a little example to try and demonstrate that. Just show you very quickly. So I'll show you here, we've got to get from point A to point D, we've got to touch the line once. So we can bounce off there. And we have two ways of solving it. Uh, there's a geometric approach, which is to reflect D to D prime and take that route there. There's an algebraic approach. We can look at this and say, where's the curve at the bottom? Um, but the, the nice thing, thing about GeoGebra <laughs> is it's dynamic, and we can look at what happens we can do that. And um, we can say, well, let's change the parameters. And you notice the equation is changing and the curve's changing. So that's relating geometry and algebra. Let's show you very quickly what GeoGebra is. Uh, I was emailed this file about a year and a half ago, and I was completely amazed. So I'll just show that to you quickly. So I'll just show you very quickly how that was made. Uh, a student has typed in some formulae. So for this point here, they've typed in minus 2 minus a, comma 3. You can get diagonal lines, a, comma a. You can move them around. You can get curved <coughs> lines. If you go further up the curriculum, you use slightly harder formulae. Um, so again, very nice example. You can use that with 10-year-old students to introduce algebra. You can use it with 18-year-old students uh, teaching parametric equations. Um, there's some traditional maths. Notes we've got a little, I've done a bit of maths. I've got a formula at the bottom, D1 minus D2 plus D3. Memorize that, I'm going to test you in a second. So we've got here, I'm constructing that, and the student has had, done a bit of pen and paper calculation. They've then typed the formula in. They've solved the problem, found a formula, they've typed it in here. And we can check if the formula's working or not. Yeah, we can see the formula's working, can't we? Because it's doing what I expected. We've got three tangential circles. We can do it another way. We can do the angle bisectors, the perpendicular points, draw some circles. So I've done that with a mouse only. And I've got the same thing again. So we've related some geometry and some algebra. So that one's made with geometry. This one's made by typing in a formula. Uh, just very briefly, we're looking at Python scripting 
in future versions of Jojo, we're trying to make that very tight, tightly linked. Uh, we've got a CAS view, I'll show you in a second, and a 3D view coming. So those are future developments. So there's solving a problem very quickly in the CAS view. Um, I'll just explain very briefly what we're going on there. So there's a cubic equation. I've differentiated it. I've gone to find the midpoint there, evaluated it. That's the midpoint evaluated. Evaluate that. That's y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. Set y equal to 0. That's clearly a linear equation in x. That was a joke. That's a linear equation in x. It is actually. And the solution is clearly x equals c, which is the answer is x equals c. So we've proved that the tangent from the midpoint crosses at the other root. Okay, so that's a, you can do that in lots of different software. I'm not saying Jojo is the best for doing that. We're looking at doing that. Uh, 3D, big deal. It's nice. Uh, Jojo's ethos is, and one of the reasons we're successful, I think, we share everything. We share our code. We share our ideas. Our users give back to the community. So everything's shared, and that's really found that very successful. Um, heard no one mention that... Um, Perhaps some of you might like to wake up at this point. Um, in other European countries, they already have computers in exams. So in Norway, they've been using computers in exams. In Germany, in some states, they have computers in exams. Um, in Austria, they've been using CAS in schools for quite a long time now. Um, they find that with students using CAS, um, the students who've used CAS are better even at the pencil and paper problems than the students who haven't used it. Um, and from 2018, uh, the Austrian exams will be compulsory for having some CAS use. Um, and Sweden are piloting some using, use of that. So that's something that we should be investigating, I think, and seeing what other countries are already doing. Uh, the Czech Republic use something called Balti. There's a little reference there. I don't know anything about that. But they use, I think it's a little bit like Scratch. They use that in the schools. So the Czech Republic are doing some exciting things there. Um, in the, and in the uh, sharing everything, there are the slides and the files from my talk. I think I've got another one here. So just this last slide, I'm just finishing up. Um, so what my, our, my vision is we're going to get students, so younger students, using just the mouse, making complex constructions using just the mouse. They can move on to typing in commands, a bit more complicated. And then we've got the Python we're looking at integrating. And we're going to get that really tightly integrated with a nice simple syntax. There's a very short example there. Um, we'll see how that goes. Thank you for listening.